Hey, welcome back to Stock Talk with Eric Anthony. Um, happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, February 8th. So before we get keep going, I totally messed up. Yesterday, I thought, for some reason, I thought yesterday was the 8th, and I thought Wednesday would be the 10th. So I thought CPI data would be coming out on Wednesday. I was wrong. My bad. It comes out on Thursday. So... Anyway, just want to let that be thrown out there. Um, today, I'll just be talking about a little bit about market behavior, what I saw. Uh, we'll discuss some of my favorite stocks, just little things that I picked up on today. Nothing crazy that jumped out too much. Um, we will talk about some after-hour activity that I think was pretty good to see. Um, with how this market has been reacting with after hours. So it's kind of it was, it was like a breath of fresh air and uh, We'll just kind of talk a little bit about how my Tuesday went um, but before that Like always, please click that like subscribe and notification bell. I would really appreciate it Like a lot. So anyone who's actually subscribed that means a lot. That's pretty cool um, I hope you guys really um, enjoy what this um, I hope you guys really enjoy this vlog um, I, I, it's my goal to just try to give you guys insight from like I said before and I, I will probably say this time and time again for anyone that is just watching this for the first time my whole goal for this this vlog is and this channel is just to be dedicated to people who um, are long-term investors um, don't get enough time to uh, watch the market and just want a little bit of update on some major sectors out there and hope that you guys learn a little bit of just some of what not to do from my mistakes, you know. Um, so, you know, they always say success leaves clues. Um, so hopefully some of my success leaves you some clues, but I know for sure a lot of my mistakes will help you. A lot of my failures will definitely give you tips of what not to do. So we'll be talking about all that today. Um, you know, let's just kind of jump right into it in regard to how the market behaved. Today seemed kind of normal. It was kind of up and then it turned a little bit where it was a little sour in the middle of the day. And then it, at the end, there was, seemed to be just buy, just a lot of buying, which is always nice to see. But I always want, just want to preface this: always keep in mind, um, keep in mind bull traps. If you don't know what a bull trap is, I will explain that in another video. I think I'm going to be kind of throwing out some terminology that I've learned along the way, and um, help to give it back to people because. There's so many channels out there where people are just dropping bull traps and, you know, in the money. And there's just all these terminologies that just, for me, still go over my head. I'm like, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. And I just think if you're going to try to put your money into something, you want to know a lot of it. And that's where I think long-term investing is a little bit easier. Because a lot of these other things, it's just like, phew, you got no delta, you got no. There's just all these things. A lot of terminology that I think takes time to not only understand, because just looking up the definition is one thing, but to look it up and understand and be able to apply it is completely different when it comes to a lot of things that move and how they react in the market, specifically to terminology. Um, but before we get back into some of the market, my Tuesday today was actually pretty fun. Like I told you before, I'm off, so I just got some time. And today was nice. Actually, last night we ran out of coffee. So my wife was like, oh, we're gonna wake up and not have coffee. Now, a couple years ago, that would have been true. But thanks to Instacart, I was able to put it in order. And when I woke up this morning, there was a bag of some food that we that I needed. Cause you have like a $30 minimum for them to deliver it. So got some goods for the house and got two packs of coffee. So that was actually pretty nice. 
Um, from there, just had breakfast. Again, I, I, I really enjoy making breakfast. As you can see here, all of the typical things I like to make, eggs, bacon, cheese, cilantro, um, toast, waffles. But today it was a little different. Today we added some avocados, some healthy fats to the mix. And that was, um, that is always nice because uh, the reason why we add avocados, that's actually something I bought from earlier, is it's my son's favorite thing. It was like one of the first like solid foods that he ate. So now, if he doesn't want to eat eggs, boom, eggs and avocado, he eats those bad boys. So that's that. I mean, he he loves avocados so much. My wife and I, and I love her, oh my God. It was her idea for us to be avocados for Halloween. So we dressed up as avocados for Halloween. And um, we went to our downtown area and it was actually kind of funny. You, you would be surprised how many people came up to us because we were dressed like avocados. And, uh, you know, people were like, oh, what are you guys? That was such a great idea. Love it. And I was like, we're avocados and he's guacamole. So, yeah, it was funny. There was like one family that, that walked by and they're like, avocado, avocado. I was like, hey. So that was kind of cool. But anyway, um, avocados is the theme today for sure. I, I think I'm actually gonna title this vlog avocados. Avocados, yeah, avocados. And um, I actually had avocados today for lunch too. But yeah, after breakfast, um, we had little man down, our wife and I just kind of kicked it today. We watched the season finale of Shit's Creek. If that's on Netflix, I don't know if any of you guys watch it, but it's a pretty good show, just like a feel good show. So we finally got to the end of it. We've been trying to end that show for quite a long time, years. I think at one point we got to like midway and then we started over and, but anyway, we finally finished it. So that was kind of cool. Um, after that, he woke up, we grubbed a little bit. He grubbed a little bit, we took him to the park. It's always nice to take him to the park just so you can see other kids and personally it's nice to just see people out again which is awesome um, I love socializing with people I, I just love people in general so it's it's nice to just see people out again do you guys remember when they took down the like basketball rims because that was gonna be preventing anyway um, basketball rims are back at the parks now so that's it's just very exciting to see to me it's very exciting to see um, after that, what do you call it? We, the walk back home was, it was nice. Like even getting to the park, it was a nice stroll today. It was a perfect weather. Man, it was just one of those nice days. There's just really, that's all I can really say. Just one of those nice days. Little man had a great time in the jungle gym. It's funny, he has to hang out in his little, in the little guy jungle gym compared to the bigger kid so he's like on the swings and he's like oh, hey what's going on over there that's so cute um he went down the slide today we like we hold him and but it's just fun it's just i just love seeing him happy i think he's gonna be pretty social too when he grows up i don't know um but yeah that was basically the day out came back made him more avocados with salmon and um a little bit of mayo and i was looking i was like damn looks kind of good so i decided to make myself like instead of a tuna melt i made myself a salmon melt and all i had was some cheddar cheese so i decided to add that bad boy on there put some avocados and boom it was actually it was actually quite um quite good uh after we were done eating i decided okay well this is a good time to go to the gym went to the gym and well, actually before that, we was kind of doing a little more DD. Um, what is DD? Due diligence. It's something that I think is very important for a lot of investors um, to do. Like I was saying earlier, you don't want to just throw your money into something you don't understand. So if you don't understand the language, you don't understand how, you know, graphs work, you don't understand um, how to read some of these financial statements. If you don't understand any of those things, or even just the how the market's behaving in general, that right there is something I think you wanna just stop before even throwing money in 
and start educating yourself a little bit in those departments. And I think it would be superbly advantageous to you to do that. Um, I think right now, like when you go on TV, unfortunately, if something's trending in like a Google search, for example, there's more than likely going to be, it's going to be on YouTube. It's and the same stocks are just going to be discussed. There's so many stocks out there, so many sectors. Find something that you're interested in and invest in that. And I think it becomes so much more fun and you become so much more involved in the process because you thoroughly enjoy where your money's going into rather than um, just, you know, blind and just throwing your money in blind, right? Um, one thing that you probably want to do with your DD after you do your DD is then decide, okay, how did I come to my decision? Do I have enough money to invest in these companies? And if I don't have enough money, how can I save up? You know, a great way of saving, perfect example today. I was going to buy breakfast because I was just kind of lazy from cooking. And I was like, no, no, no. Because if we were to buy Black Bear, that'd probably come out to be like 34, 35 bucks, right? And so instead, didn't do that and actually transferred money over to my brokerage account because I was gonna buy today because the market was actually um, kind of red. And I love in, I love buying on red days uh, more so than buying on green days. So I was like, okay, well, 34 bucks, maybe I can get like 15, 16 shares of bingo. That was the goal today. But it was nice just, you know, instead having it in the account knowing, okay, I might make a buy today, which is always fun to build up the equity and then kind of go from there. So getting back to DD, right? So did that after I did my DD on some of my favorite stocks, which I'll be showing you guys shortly, um, decided to go to the gym. It was leg day and it was actually a pretty good day. Just got in, got out. Today was all like just quad base. But anyway, that was kind of my day. And it was actually, like I was saying, a really, really nice, productive, and just a beautiful day outside. And those are always nice. I think I appreciate them more so now than ever before. But um, in regard to um, the market, as I was saying, it started here, kind of went down a little bit, and then there was like this reversal. And I was like, I wonder why this reversal? And I was starting to hear like on CNBC that there was a little bit of like, people were just starting to acknowledge, and even some YouTubers and even in Bloomberg, they're acknowledging that um, small caps are almost like bottoming out, right? And in some cases, look at NNDM, almost like, is this a reversal? So don't, don't get too crazy, but these are some of the things that I noticed. You know, there was a little bit of reversal, a little bit of buyback towards the end of the day. And that's always a telling sign of just kind of where the market sentiment is at that time. <coughs> um, at the time of this recording, uh, our favorite, well, my favorite, uh, cryptos to monitor are all down today, about six, two, one, and about 5%. You know, nothing too crazy. Something to keep in mind out there if you're new to the market is that crypto usually is popping more on the weekends than during the week. So just something to keep in mind. Well, another thing, cases, right, for the vid, that's down. That's about 250K on a seven day right now. And remember, if you saw the videos before, I had mentioned that at one point when we were at our peak, it was about 1.1 million. And it was dropped at that time, it dropped to like 350K cases. And now it's dropped to 250K cases, which is great to see. Um, you know, some of our favorite stocks, such as Bingo, today Bingo uh, announced that they're hiring and, you know, that's maybe not so too significant. You know, it was up today, which was nice. Um, the entire genomic sector, for some reason, was down. But Bingo was up today, as you can see here. But, yeah, with Bingo today, the announcement of hiring as a research, um, in the research lab, was always nice to see. Because, especially with things going on right now, if you notice, it's better to be saying you're hiring than um firing or letting people go like if you notice what was going on over at peloton peloton just got rid of almost three thousand people right and 
now there's discussions about just being acquired at this point. So to me, when you see your company posting jobs and letting you know that they're hiring, it's always a good sign. Um, as I said before, NNDM had showed a little bit of a reversal towards the end. It's kind of been positive the past couple of trading sessions, which is always great. So something that just kind of monitor if you are a big NNDM, big NNDM fan. Um, it's always nice to see. Uh, one thing that NNDM also did announce or just kind of let people realize that the CF CFO position has now been filled with Sean Patterson, which is the uh, used to work as an executive over at Amazon. So that's always nice to see. Um, those things are things that kind of jumped out to me today. Um, ABML just kind of showed a little more progress with the project. And just like I said, just one of those days, kind of steady, kind of stagnant, but not a day that I think was worth trying to deep dive into any plays from the things that I that I monitor. Um, even Mount Fang today was kind of stagnant as well, as, um, as you can see here. So, you know, getting back to what I was telling you about, um, almost buying Black Bear for about 34, 35 bucks, and then trade, sending it over to my brokerage account and wanting to use that to buy bingo today. But it didn't happen. Why did it happen? Because again, I can't time the market. Usually I like to make my buys in mid-session, a little bit after you know the East Coast has had, has had lunch. And usually around that time, if I see things are green or going up, I'm like, I'll just kind of be patient and wait. Um, you know, it's always best sometimes that if the if a decision doesn't need to be made, then don't make the decision. Sometimes you just want to be patient. You want to be patient with how you allocate your money. And in instances like these, now that money is no longer just spent on food, even though you have food here at the house, food at your house, right? Now you have that, that you, you had a good meal, cheap, and now you have the money in your brokerage account that you weren't even anticipating and it's still saved. And so um, that kind of brings me to one of the mistakes I've made as an investor. And maybe you guys can learn from me and not do this. A um, few years back, maybe like five, six, seven years back. I don't even know it's a few, anything more than three, right? Um, Chipotle was something that I could barely afford at the time. I used to love eating at Chipotle. And I was unaware that as I had kept going there, I realized that Chipotle was funded by McDonald's. Like McDonald's was owning part of it, right? Like, and then they took it out. I don't know why companies do this. Toyota did this with Tesla before too. But anyway, um, so Chipotle's stock at that time was like hovering around the threes for quite a while. And I kept, you know, at that time, if all I could, like Chipotle to me was a, that was a big meal. But I always felt in my heart or like in my mind, not like, oh my God, I'm in love with it. But I felt that, you know what? I would love to invest in Chipotle, CPMG and stock ticker CPMG. And I always, you know, I've always told uh, Crystal, my wife, I always told her, we got to invest in Chipotle. And I always tell her, when it gets lower, we just got to hop in. We got to hop in. Truth be told, that thing's never gotten lower. Um, you know why? That has actually, it follows suit with companies like um, Tesla, companies like um, Apple, Coca-Cola. All four different type of companies, right? But what makes these four unique is that they all build their own products. And that's important for a long, for a long-term investor is, you know, specifically like with Chipotle, what's always like blown my mind is that they do their own farming. They grow their own food. They're growing the product. They control the trucks to their facilities. They control the trucks to all the locations that they have. And they're just doing the damn thing. And so today and after hours, they of course reported great earnings. 
um, they beat their EPS earnings per share, and they also had a beat on revenue. And like I was saying before, those two those two metrics are always big on how algorithms read these reports as well as how the market reacts to these reports, which includes all types of investors. Um, and even, even um, growth too, that's something that a lot of people pay attention to as well and guidance. Those are the things that we'll all just, I'll, I'll probably discuss, like I said, probably on the weekends, I like, think what I will be doing since we don't have that much market chatter is that will kind of just be a little bit more catered to videos that I feel are informative that can probably benefit you on just more mistakes that I've made. So there you go. And um, so yeah, getting back to Chipotle, like I said, I've always liked it when it was in the threes, twos, when it dropped to like the ones, I was broke, could not afford it. And now, after today, after a 6% jump in after hours, it's trading for, look at that, 1600, 1600 per share. So that's a perfect example of, and you know, look how it follows this trajectory of just stagnant, 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 you know, it's just, it's just staying in this channel, boom, 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 stay in this channel. And then look at it, look at these stairs up, boom, 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 because after a while, after you stop investing in yourself as the company, I mean, I don't think it, the, these companies are never not investing in themselves. What I'm saying is these investments that you make in yourself as a company that you reinvest in, into growth and um, reinvest into the right hires and the right sites and all these things, rather than focusing on the short term or even focusing on the well-being of the shareholder, when companies focus on the the best interests of the company, those are the companies I think that are almost my favorite to, to, not almost, they're always my favorite companies to invest in. So just something to keep in mind if you're new to the market and there's something that you want to kind of figure out how to throw your money in because how you put your money into the market will change depending on who you are your behavior as a person, and who you are as a person, and your financial situation at that time. Some people are going in for quick, quick runs. Day traders, they they do the damn thing. There's people that do swing trading, option trading, and some people focus on dividends, and others focus on long term. But you want to think about long term uh, investment. That's not one year, two year, three, five, six, ten years. Those that's real long term investment investing and if you can you know wrap your brain around that type of approach in my opinion again not financial advice you can see yourself with some substantial substantial returns as long as you're investing in companies that have strong fundamentals right and something that you have high conviction on um i hope with this channel i can just kind of give you some strategies as well along with the mistakes I've made to help you become better investors. Um, I don't think it's my job to try to tell you what to and what not to buy. I'll just tell you, you know, every day I'm gonna tell you what interests me, things that I pay attention to. And um, yeah, but um, as the day is kind of winded down, just about an hour and a half ago, of, by the time of this recording, um, it was, Senator Warren and Senator Daines introduced the first bipartisan Senate bill to ban lawmakers in trading stocks. Um, you know, why that's important is because we all know that there's a lot of money with, with Congress that's in, in stocks. Don't need to kind of go down that rabbit hole. But as an investor, if you're trying to figure out your positions and if you can do some of your DD and figure out where some of the money has gone to specifically with certain companies. I don't know, Microsoft, right? Um, it might be advantageous for you to figure out, is that money still staying in? Has that money left the market? You know, if, if we have um, a bipartisan Senate bill that is ready to ban lawmakers from trading stocks, then, you know, that might... That might be something to think about. Like I said before, do you think that money's still in the market or do you think that money has been taken out? Because now you're not allowed to be in it. 
So that's a lot of money. And I know some members of our Congress have been open saying that that's how they um, reciprocate or basically pay themselves because of all their hard work. So something to think about. So yeah, so some things we wanna probably just uh, keep in mind for tomorrow will just basically be, how does the market react to the bill that they, that the bipartisan bill that they have for banning um, congressmen or Congress from trading just in general, right? So let's see how that goes. That paired with um, CPI data that comes in not so hot and, or maybe, you know, that doesn't scream hyperinflation, we might have a dovish response in the market for quite a while until the Fed speaks in March. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I'll hope to bring you more. Uh, tomorrow, I will be focusing a little bit more deeper on Palantir and its um, contribution to some of the vaccination rollouts as well as just data in general regarding that space and how they utilize um, their how they utilize their um, their product foundry for that all right well like always i'll see you guys manana and you guys have a good rest of your night this was eric anthony with stock talks oh. <laughs> this was stock talk with eric anthony Hope you guys have a great night.